Hey folks, this is Arcaden with part 6 of this beginner's guide on how to get to your first planet in Factorio Space Age. We are at the last part here, which means that by the end of this video we will be sitting pretty on a brand new planet of our choice. To get there, here's what we're going to do, with timestamps below if you want to jump ahead. We're going to break ground on a space production factory, set up our production utility science, I'm going to talk through some general base management strategies because you're going to be doing a lot of that at this point. We'll build our first rocket silo, build a space science platform and do some key research to unlock the planets, build our travel space platform, pack our bags and go. Very exciting stuff. Now like always I'm presenting these steps in groups to make it easier to watch, but you'll likely be doing a little bit here, a little bit there, that's how the game goes. At this point in my factory, I've set up a dedicated production area for the buildings I'll need for space platforms. This area will grow in the next few hours as I unlock more technologies. It'll start with just space foundations. You need a lot of those, so get those started soon. Then once the first space platform is built, I'll add asteroid collectors and crushers to the area. And after some science research, thrusters. Luckily, all of these buildings take pretty much the same materials, so this isn't particularly complicated. The area will need access to steel, copper wire, electric engines, low density structures, and blue circuits. It's also time, if you haven't, to set down builds for utility and production science. Again, I'm using the Tileable Science build, which I'll put in the description below. My bots are going to build that over time. These two new science packs, plus the upcoming space science, means our research labs are going to need to take in a total of seven inputs. So for me, I need to redesign my build. I always do this a little differently, this time I made it a square because I thought that'd be cute, and then I have a single row of labs with two belts on each side. Each of those belts will be double loaded, allowing for up to eight different science packs. Now, both production and utility science are gonna move slowly. There's an overlap between the resources you need for those science packs and for space production. And with the amount that you're producing right now, you're gonna have to be adjusting where those resources are going here or there. There's a few important technologies to unlock with these science packs. Focus on elevated rails, those are important for Volcanus or Fogora. And I would also research all the engineer armor and equipment technologies. After that, everything is kind of gravy, so you could deprioritize science production and focus on space. And that's the type of base management you'll likely be getting into at this point. A big part of this game is tweaking and adjusting your builds and production based on changing priorities and needs, especially in the early game here. Yes, it's still the early game. I know. At one point I decide I'm going too slow and the holdup, fundamentally, is plastic because circuits. Again. To manage that, I tweak and add more light oil to petroleum conversion. Then I decide I want to increase oil production as a whole. So I add a whole new outpost, add new refineries. This improves the plastic production and you see my red circuits begins to really increase. As I'm doing space production, I see that steel is kind of meh. Instead of getting a new ore patch, I see that my iron plate production is currently oversaturated, so I just divert some of those resources into a new smelting line for the time being, and I could always undo it. I bring all this up just to normalize this type of work, this kind of shifting and adjusting based on what's going on. It's gonna happen, and it's not a sign that you're playing the game wrong or anything like that. And if you ever need more materials, you could always set up more outposts. There's no real negative to doing that, especially if you have nuclear power up and running. All right, our foundations are humming, research is moving, let's build our rocket silo. Once this is done, we'll be able to get space platforms going and the whole next part of the game will open up. The rocket silo is a big craft. You'll likely have to empty your inventory to some degree if you're manually crafting it. Once you do, set it down. As with all things in the game, make sure you have some space around it. As an example, this is an endgame novice rocket silo area from another factory, and you can see that you, you end up with a lot of silos. Once you have the silo, you're ready to start building a rocket. To do so, you need to deliver blue circuits, rocket fuel, and low-density structures to the rocket silo. Those materials are used to make rocket parts. Once you craft enough rocket parts, the rocket appears and is ready to launch. You're going to be sending up a lot of rockets over the course of the game and even just to get this first ship, so a big part of your focus going forward is going to be making sure you have a steady supply of those materials. Once you have a rocket, it's time to build your first space platform. To do so, you have to craft a space starter pack and then send it into space via your new rocket. Craft the starter pack, manually load it into your finished rocket, make sure automatic request is turned off otherwise you won't be able to manually load, and then click create new platform. Name it. Send it. Celebrate. My engineer celebrates by doing zoomies, because in my personal factorial lore, the engineer comes from a race of space dogs. 
You are now ready to start sending and receiving materials from space. Let's talk through how this works. The rocket silo is essentially a gigantic requester chest. Bots are able to deliver requested materials to the silo to fill up a rocket's inventory. The way this works is that on your space platform, you place a ghost to build something. Here, we'll do some foundations. This creates a request, which you can see here, that is sent to the rocket silos. Make sure your silo is set to fulfill automatic requests and then bots will deliver that material to the rocket. Once the rocket inventory is filled to capacity, it launches and delivers the goods to the platform that made the request. Rocket capacity is decided by a new weight mechanic, but you don't really have to dig into that. The simplest way to know how many materials a rocket can hold is to look at the item in your inventory. Each item has a rocket capacity. In the case of foundations, that's 50, which means if you need 500 foundations for your space platform, you're going to need to send up 10 rockets. So you could start to see how this might take some time. A few other things to note about requests and shipping. By default, a rocket accepting automatic requests will always send up a full stack of materials. So if your platform is requesting, say, two asteroid crushers, the rocket will just send a stack of 10. You'll have extra in your space platform inventory. This is actually good for some items as it allows your ship to automatically replace destroyed items while in transit. You can always manually load a rocket with a mix of materials and send it to the platform of your choice. Space platforms can also request materials through the hub menu system. This is just like the engineer's personal logistics requests. You select an item, select which planet it comes from, and then the platform will automatically request that item when it is in orbit of that planet. The final piece of this shipping structure is the cargo landing pad. You can only have one of these on each planet. This also has a menu for requests. Once you make one, it sends a signal to all space platforms in orbit, and any platform that has an item will then automatically ship it to the landing pad. Now it's time to build our first space platform. To unlock travel to other planets, we need to research technologies using the Space Science Pack. These science packs can only be built on space platforms. So the first platform you set up will be all about making space science packs and then shipping it down to novice. Space platforms are essentially a mini factory. They take in resources, can process them on the platform, then use or ship them. Outside of requesting materials from a planet, the other way you gather resources on a platform is from asteroids. Asteroid collectors will grab small asteroid chunks within their area of effect. There are three types of asteroid chunks. Each of these then goes into a crusher. The crusher breaks metallic asteroids into iron ore, carbonic asteroids into carbon, and oxide asteroids into ice. You'll notice that the asteroid crushers are another building with multiple outputs. They have a 20% chance to export another asteroid chunk, so that has to be managed. To produce space science packs, you need ice, iron plates, and carbon. Ice and carbon come directly from the processor. For iron plates, you will smelt the iron ore you get from asteroids on the platform. Here's my space science platform. You can certainly do a more efficient design, but once I get something that works, I tend to just let it live as its awkward self. Personal experience. The asteroid collectors on the front of the platform grab small asteroids and then place them onto this belt, and those get routed into the asteroid crushers. I have a crusher for each asteroid type. To manage the multiple exports, I have two filtered inserters for each crusher. One sends the refined material into the cargo bay, the other sends any asteroid chunk back onto the belt. Now you need to keep this belt moving because it will clog if you don't have some system for that. To do this, I've set up a simple circuit network that activates these inserters if there are above a certain amount of items on the belt and then throws the excess into the vastness of space. This type of circuit uses an arithmetic combinator. Place one down. Using the circuit wire, attach a segment of the belt to the input of the combinator. Click on the belt section you chose, select Read Belt Contents, and the option Hold All Belts. You'll see the whole belt now has wires around the edge of it. It is sending the total contents of the belt into the arithmetic Combinator, which you can see here. If you can't see it, make sure that the device is powered up. In this Combinator menu, select Each, and then multiply it by 1. Then set the Combinator output to a symbol of choice. What's happening now is the Combinator is taking the total number of items, that's the each command on the belt. The Combinator has to do math, we just want the total number, so we simply multiply it by one so it doesn't change the total amount. Then it outputs that number along with the symbol you chose. Finally, hook the Combinator output up to the inserters, and in their menu, select the symbol and choose it to activate when the items on the belt get to a certain point. In my case here, it's over 200. I'm sending the carbon, iron ore, and ice into the cargo bay. This cargo bay is the only storage you could have on a platform. You can't place chests. I put these items into the bay because I want to maintain a surplus of them in case asteroid collection slows down for some reason. 
To manage that inventory, I connect these inserters to the cargo bay with a circuit network, and then set them to activate only when I have under my desired amount, in this case under 100 of each. That way, this inventory doesn't fill up and become all iron ore. Once it reaches the number I've selected, the inserter shuts down, and the rest of the belt trash setup here will keep everything moving. To make space science packs, I take the iron ore into a smelting line on this side. I output carbon and ice onto a shared belt like so, then this all gets routed into some assemblers that make space science packs. Those packs get stored in the cargo bay. Finally, I place solar panels to power this all. I usually just fit them in wherever I can. On the planet, get your cargo landing pad down and set up a request for space science packs. Now the platform will automatically start sending those packs down to the bay. Route those packs into your research area and now you can start researching space science technologies. Prioritize researching thrusters and the rest of the logistics chests. You're going to want those blue chests. Make sure to set up some production for them. And after that, you could focus on unlocking travel to the different planets. As you might have put together by now, all of this takes a good amount of time. You have to ship all of these materials up to the platform for it to be built, and that's restricted by the speed with which you could send rockets. At this point, that's kind of slow, but there's likely plenty for you to do while waiting to secure Navas for when you're gone. Some reminders and things to consider. Finish connecting all your outposts into the logistics network. This will allow you to automatically repair and support those outposts. Make sure your defenses are upgraded to include two types of weapons. Upgrade your engineer's equipment. Get to the best stuff before you leave for the planet. Especially make sure to craft the portable fission reactor. Some of the other planets don't really have good solar power, so you need this to keep your equipment running consistently. You could clear out biter bases in your pollution cloud. Now you don't have to do this, they'll just grow back, but I think it's fun. You could also just grow your circuit production. I bet you need more. Never forget the main circuit strategy. Once space science is up and running, start building your next space platform, the one that will take you to your planet. Send up another starter platform, name it, I always go with Andiamo, let's go, and begin designing it. There are two new mechanics for this space platform. The first is you need defense. On the way to any of the planets, you're going to run into larger asteroid chunks. Turrets placed on the front and the sides of your platform will make quick work of medium-sized asteroids, breaking them down into small chunks that can be collected and used. But they run out of ammo quickly, and you need to constantly supply them. You can ship a bunch of ammo up from the planet, and I recommend that, especially at the beginning, but you also want to produce ammo at the platform and do it at the fastest speed possible. You'll see on this ship I have four smelters and one yellow ammo production building with speed modules in it. Getting ammo management right can take a bit. It was actually, I think, the trickiest part of the space platforms for me. The second new system is your fuel and thrusters. To move, your ship needs to send two liquids into the thrusters. Thruster oxidizer, which is made by combining iron ore and water, and thruster fuel, made from carbon and water. So you need water. To get that, you'll have to take the ice that you gather from crushing oxide asteroids, melt it in a chemical plant, and then send that to chemical plants that produce the fuel in the oxidizer. The fuel in the oxidizer then get routed into the thrusters. The thrusters input and outputs are designed a little odd in a like tiny puzzle. You'll get it. I believe in you. To show an example of pulling this all together, here's a ship I made for this playthrough. This could get to a planet and back without exploding. Yay! The overall approach of this design was using the central hub as a way to manage inventory, which you don't have to do, but I find is easier, especially at the beginning. You'll see all of these inserters are connected to the hub via a circuit network, so I could tell them when to turn on and off based on the amount of materials in the hub, and that's really how I manage it. The asteroid collectors put the chunks on the main belt, which then get pulled into the bay. Up here, I have my crushing belt. Inserters place the asteroid chunks into the crusher, and the results of that are put back into the hub. Now with this build, the hub could fill up quickly with asteroid chunks, or too much of one material. So on the sides here, I have these two wildly inefficient trash builds. They use filtered inserters that are set to activate when there is too much of any of the one materials. So if I have more than two carbonic chunks in the hub, this inserter goes active and sends the surplus into space. I do this for all the chunks and all the, the secondary materials. Chunks. The iron ore is smelted and turned into ammo here. Ammo is placed from the hub onto a belt on one side of it. So the ammo belt and the asteroid belt are the same. I've set them up so that they each get outputted onto a different side of the belt. For fuel and oxidizer, I have carbon and iron going into these chemical plants. Ice gets melted here and goes into those plants. And there you go. You definitely want a tank for each of them. I never leave a planet unless that tank is above 8k for each liquid. 
you manage the travel plans of your space platform through the hub system. It's essentially the same setup as the train. You can manually direct the platform, or you could set up conditions that when active will cause the platform to move to a particular location. In the early game, one thing I like to do for platforms that start operating by themselves is connect my fuel and oxidizer storage tanks to the hub via the circuit network. Then in the scheduling menu, I could select a condition for the ship to only move when both of those liquid storage is above a certain point, say 8k. There's lots of options you could play around with here, but your first trip will likely just be manual. This will take a couple of tries, so save generously, and if you get frustrated, definitely use someone's blueprint. There are plenty of other puzzles coming up. Alright, we're so close. Now that your ship is built, the next step is deciding which planet you want to go to. You have three options, Gleba, Vulcanus, and Fulgora. I've made a full video that goes through the details of each of those planets, which I'll link below and I recommend checking out. The TLDR, though, is Gleba is a really difficult first planet. You want to go to either Vulcanus or Fulgora. And if I had to make a recommendation, I'd say Vulcanus is the best for beginners. It's the closest to Novice in how it works, so the learning curve is a bit easier. Finally, what should you bring? You have to empty your inventory fully and your ammo to enable your engineer to travel to the space platform, so everything you bring must be in the platform's hub inventory. The exception is you could keep your equipment grid the way it is, so make sure to set that up for the next planet. You don't really need much protection for Volcanus or Fulgora. I would focus on maximizing speed and construction bots. Now on each planet you can theoretically build up a factory from scratch, but that takes a while and you want to make your life a little easier. To think through what to bring, ask yourself what you would need to build like a mini version of your current novice factory, and use that as a guide. You'll probably want a little bit of smelting, some belts or logistics bots to move items. You can always, and you will, send your ship back to novice to get more materials and then bring them to Volcanus. So your goal here is not perfection, you just want a solid start. Some general advice. Don't ship raw resources like ore or basic stuff like iron plates or copper wire. All of the planets have methods for you to acquire basic resources relatively quickly. Make sure you send construction robots in your platform so you could put them into your personal inventory and use them to build things. Craft and send a cargo landing pad. That'll make your life much easier. Solar panels and accumulators are needed for Volcanus and will help you get started. For Fulgora, you just need to bring accumulators. No solar panels are needed. You could also ship materials to create a rocket silo, but that's a lot of materials, and I usually save that for the second rocket trip. Once your platform's fully loaded, you are ready to go. Get everything out of your inventory, ammo too, and travel to your space platform. I've decided to go to Volcanus, so I get that going, and there we go. Now you just wait to make sure you don't explode. If not, you land safely on the planet, and then welcome to Factorio mid-game. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You have essentially beaten a slightly quicker version of Vanilla Factorio, and you're ready for the new puzzles and challenges of the Space Age expansion. As general advice as you go forward, remember, focus on functionality over complete efficiency. If you're lost on what to do, pick a technology in the research tree and go for that. Don't forget to use the Factoriopedia. And, you know, don't stress. Although the game can be difficult, it's also pretty forgiving, and there's a whole amazing community out there ready to support. That's it for this series, folks. I hope it has been helpful. If it has, please do like, comment, subscribe. The channel is still growing, and that's a huge, huge help and always greatly appreciated. And if you have other Factorio content you'd like to see, please do let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and happy building.